Hi everyone, I'm Ying Zhang from Adam T. H. Aachen University in Germany. The topic of my presentation is Semantic Sensor Data Federation, Unleashing the Power of Dynamic Knowledge Graph. So to start with, the, uh, the interoperability has become an important issue in data access, data, trans uh, data transmission, and also the cross-domain collaboration. And the linked data was proposed to have the potential to, uh, to handle the heterogeneous data set. It can provide a neutral format to facilitate the exchange of data. But in, in the AEC sector, we often assume that the underlying knowledge graph is static. So people are exchange their file best uh, uh, file-based data um, during their collaboration work, while in reality, events are composed of uh, a series of uh, temporal evolutions. So, however, sometimes semantic wave may not be the most suitable um, data format for all data scenarios, particularly when it comes to the unstructured data or the streaming data, which requires massive data storage. So especially, um, and especially for example, when we're handling the streaming data protocols like BACnet or KNX, the conversion process can be really complex and also time consuming, what Alex also mentioned. And the semantic wave can sometimes uh, lead to the data size increase and also potentially impact on the storage and the performance. So in this research, we proposed a hybrid data storage structure, which uh, basically, uh, data, uh, which basically uh, we have a data lake, uh, the data which is basically uh, the data lake is a central location that holds multiple uh, multiple data formats that are stored in their native raw format. And the data lake can somehow eliminate some problems with data silos, especially when um, especially in data duplication or multiple security policies or difficulty with collaborations. So we will use this IoT uh, best monitoring scenario to test our hybrid storage st structure. So uh, we have the contextual data and because of the uh, heterogeneous data feature, this kind of data we will start in the graph, data, uh, graph database. It's basically a catalog of uh, all the all these data. So and there are also very small, uh, very small data volume. So it's pretty efficient and also interoperable to solve this in the graph database. And we also have the time series data which is reach really large volumes and also according to the different retention policy different retention policies it can um, somehow update very frequently so it's probably probably better to solve them uh, to store them in their native format and uh, go back to the annotations on RDF the RDF format was proposed at the beginning with data federation in mind, um, and all kinds of uh, data can be converted to a set of triples. So as the RDF evolves, um, there are different various forms of uh, syntax was proposed to add annotations on RDF. So the first is the RDF reification syntax which is not very efficient. As you can see, it requires three additional triple to uh, refer to the original triple that with metadata. The second is the named graph, and which requires an external identifier. 
but it can add a graph label annotation on IDF. And to, um, in order to storage and uh, uh, ex express our contextual data catalog more efficient, so we choose the, the RDF star syntax to more concise the RDF, RDF star syntax in our research. And to construct uh, the dynamic knowledge graph, um, uh, we, we, we used uh, um, an alignment module to add the contextual data on event. So we have the publisher, publisher which is the owner of the event, and also we have the agent who will verify the um, published uh, event. And the, also the agent will generate the version information. And also we also have uh, also add the location information and the start time and end time to the event. And uh, we use the uh, uh, IoT based monitoring and monitoring scenario to test our structure. Uh, so we extracted about 1,000 set of observation value to test the performance. So three approach, story, uh, three modeling approaches was tested here. The first is the RDF reification approach, which, as you can see, it's not very efficient. And then we used the RDF stars. Uh, uh, modeling approach, it's reduced almost 50% uh, of uh, uh, data size. And the third is the RDF star plus time series database. As you can see, it generates only very small amount of data. It's because most of the data were stored in the time series database. And the RDF star is basically a, a data catalog for all this information. So to conclude, at least the RDF star can express the contextual data more efficiently somehow. And um, um, about query of heterogeneous contextualized time series, time series data. So we will use the Sparkle federated query protocol here. So we have the contextual data endpoint and time series endpoint, and, and we can use the federated query to access different uh, access different uh, data endpoint, and to retrieve and access whatever the information you want. And we also have a demonstration show how to query the. It, uh, contextual data and also the time series data in JSON format and the RDA format respectively. And we also create a demonstration platform that um, users can access their RFC file and also um, uh, get the real time, get the almost the real time contextual data and the uh, sensor data. And the user can also use the filter function to retrieve the information they want. So, to conclude, uh, we propose a hybrid uh, data structure that data are linked, uh, whether it's time source database or IFC or other, other any format. And all information is uh, open and uh, exchanged in a dynamic environment, comes with permission authentication. And uh, also, for the future work, I would like to discuss. We're using this kind of gener uh, we are using this kind of dedicated uh, dedicated uh, um, query language all the time, like uh, Sparkle in FluxQL, um, SQL. So imagine in the future if we can use a kind of a generic access protocol that can access different formats. 
and, and the um, dedicated, dedicated uh, query language can be rewrite or mapping or integrate into a common access protocol. That would be very, uh, so the data format is no longer a problem as long as we have a common access protocol. Okay, thank you, that's all my presentation.